It's no secret that many of today's college students and recent graduates are ignorant of history and are clueless about how our system of government works. According to a 2018 survey conducted by the Woodrow Wilson National Fellowship Foundation, only one in three Americans would be able to pass the U.S. citizenship test. However, the most disturbing effects of historical ignorance are playing out right now before our eyes. Droves of young people are tearing down or defacing historical monuments without discernment about who or what the statue represents. To them, anything that occurred or that was revered in the past must be bad and therefore must be reviled in the name of progress. It certainly doesn't matter if certain monuments depict an abolitionist or a freed slave or a Union Army general. They must all come down. Hi, I'm Shannon Watkins, and this is A Higher Education Moment, a video series presented by the James G. Martin Center for Academic Renewal. Today, we're going to discuss the causes and effects of widespread historical ignorance and why the higher education system is largely to blame. Colleges and universities across the country don't require students to study history. Although students at many colleges are technically required to take a history course in order to fulfill their general education requirements, many institutions are extremely lenient about what counts as a foundational history class. For example, instead of taking a survey course in American history, a student at UNC Chapel Hill can easily fulfill their general education history requirement by taking a course entitled Love and Politics in Early India or Samurai Monks and Pirates History and Historiography of Japan's Long 16th Century. Even history majors at UNC Chapel Hill don't need to study American history to complete their degree requirements. They are, however, required to take a class in African, Asian, and Middle Eastern history or Latin American history. History majors at other top schools, such as the University of Chicago, the University of Pennsylvania, and Yale University, have the option to not study American history. A 2016 report from the American Council of Trustees and Alumni also known as ACTA, called the lack of knowledge of American history a crisis in civic education. Every year for the past 11 years, ACTA grades colleges and universities based on whether or not they require key subjects, such as history, math, and economics in their general education curricula. ACTA gives schools credit for the history U.S. government requirement if they require students to take a survey course in either U.S. government or history with enough chronological and or topical breadth to expose students to the sweep of American history and institutions. Many top schools such as Harvard, Yale, Princeton, UNC Chapel Hill, UCLA, Berkeley, and Stanford don't meet ACTA's history standard. All in all, ACTA has found that only 18% of four-year colleges require a foundational course in U.S. or government. Even worse, 70% of the nation's top colleges do not require history majors to take a course in U.S. history. But the bleak numbers don't stop there. Countless surveys reveal just how ignorant Americans are of their own history. According to the Annenberg Public Policy Center, 22% of Americans cannot name any of the three branches of government. In 2017, only 26% could name all three branches. The First Amendment Center of the Freedom Forum Institute conducted a survey in 2019, and 16% of respondents said that the right to bear arms was guaranteed by the First Amendment. 29% of respondents agreed that the freedoms of the First Amendment went too far. 
The National Association of Scholars found that 16 of the top 50 colleges had mandatory or preferred survey courses in American history in 1964. Nearly 30 years later, in 1993, that number was zero. A 2017 C-SPAN survey found that 90% of likely voters agreed with the following statement. Decisions made by the U.S. Supreme Court have an impact on my everyday life as a citizen. But 57% could name a single sitting justice. A 2011 Newsweek survey found that 70% of Americans didn't know that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. But mere ignorance alone does not fully explain the fevered frenzy and hatred of America's history and institutions. Universities don't only fail to teach American history, they actively promote material that depicts America as racist, sexist, xenophobic, and fundamentally immoral. Sadly, pseudo-historians like Howard Zinn and air-ridden publications such as the 1619 Project have gained special prominence in both the K-12 and higher education systems, places that ought to be laboratories of knowledge and truth-seeking. In the end, it's no wonder why so many young people struggle to name the three branches of government or can't distinguish between Ulysses S. Grant and Robert E. Lee or why young people are tearing down or defacing statues of notable Americans like Abraham Lincoln, Frederick Douglass, and Matthias Baldwin, or burning down 200-year-old churches and decapitating statues of saints like Junipero Serra. As our history is being raised to the ground, it is more vital than ever that higher education stakeholders, alumni, trustees, legislators, and parents say enough is enough and demand true educational reform. Teach students about the history and exceptionalism of the United States of America in an impartial and truthful way. The stakes have never been higher.